Well, hello, and thanks for tuning in to this segment of Minute for Moms, brought to you by Healthy Connections. I'm Crystal Welch. I'm a registered nurse with Quality Insights, and today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit with our team, and uh, and it's brought to you today by Healthy Connections. Uh, Healthy Connections is a Marshall Initiative, and it's a collaborative community response aimed at uh, supporting pregnant women and families uh, in the Uh, community who are struggling with substance use disorder, Uh, but together we um, are participating with other agencies and we're dedicated to utilizing and enhancing evidence-based practices and just really making it a meaningful difference in our community. Today I'm joined by Talisha Franklin. Uh, She's the clinical coordinator of the Maternity Center at the Hoops Family Hospital at Cabell Huntington Hospital. And she's also the coordinator of the MOMS program. Um, And along with Talisha is Sherry Carpenter. Uh, She's a certified lactation consultant and a mother of nine children and a grandmother to eight. Welcome ladies. Uh, Thank you for joining us. And uh, let's get started. So I just kind of wanted to ask some general questions uh, to start us off with. And um, just if, if you could just uh, talk a little bit about the benefits of breastfeeding uh, for the both mom and baby. Everything. <laughs> the, the breastfeeding promotes the bonding between mom and baby. It's all the health benefits. Um, babies getting all the good things for mom's body. So it helps them grow, helps their brain grow. Um, mom passes along any viruses or illnesses that she would get they pass the antibodies into her breast milk um, so that helps protect baby Um, it just um, the research goes on and on about how many long-term benefits there are for breastfeeding we always talk about the benefits to baby too which they're um, just we could talk this whole time Mm -hmm. about the benefits but a few benefits for mom that sometimes people don't talk about is it um, decreases decreases her risk of postpartum hemorrhage decreases her risk for postpartum depression, um, decreases her risk for um, female cancers in the future, ovarian cancer, breast cancer. Um, Those are just a few um, benefits for mom, but they're important to note. So we talked about the benefits of breastfeeding. Uh, Let's talk about the potential risk of breastfeeding while having substance use disorder. It depends on the substance. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're talking about moms that are in a program, um, it is actually considered, if they're in a program, to breastfeed because that will help them and the babies wean down gradually. Um, absolutely. If you're in, if you're um, having um, struggling with substance use disorder um, and using uh, poly substances or illicit substances. Um, you know, it's not recommended to breastfeed, but if you are in a consistent in an MAT program, it is encouraged. All right. So how, how does the MAT for substance use disorder um, affect breastfeeding or does it? It does. There's still a portion um, of the medication that um, gets um, into the infant's system, but it is such a low um, concentration um, that it's actually more beneficial to breastfeed the benefit outweighs the risk, so to speak. It is more beneficial than harm causing. So you're saying some substances can pass through the breast milk. So what certain substances um, affect the baby? Well, let's talk about CBD gummies and THC. (laughs) Do you wanna give the research? Yeah, well, all the, the latest research has shown um, Dr. Hale has it in his book as an L4, and you're the, I love, he does all his medications, L1 to L4, L1 is the safest, um, L5 would be like absolutely not. Well, this one is an L4, and so they're saying that the biggest thing is there is no long-term research on this, so it is something that we should stay away from. The other thing is now that marijuana or gummies or oils are all legal now, that people don't realize like back in the 80s that marijuana was like only 4% THC. And now all those things are up to 90% because they're not regulated. And that's one of the big differences. Yeah. So, okay. Go ahead. They were just saying that it peaks in at one hour in a mom's system, 
that it can stay in their system six days up to six weeks. So the baby and, it, and a lot of it binds in the breast milk, it goes to the breast milk. So baby is actually getting a level that's almost eight times higher than what mom is getting. Wow, thank you for that information. Um, so let's talk about other substances. So are there specific substances that are more harmful than others during breastfeeding? I mean, I'm not sure what you're dealing with the different, um, because like they were just, now the Suboxone that said, um, they said if you were stable on Suboxone, it was encouraged. But if you were not on it stable before you got pregnant, then they said it was not. Incorrect. Right. Anytime we have anybody um, with inconsistency in their program, um, perhaps had a relapse using poly substance, we do discourage breastfeeding. Um, we um, we we want everyone to breastfeed, but we do want 90 days of consistency. We want somebody that's been in a program 90 days. Um, on their medication, whether that be buprenorphine, methadone, whatever treatment program they're in. Um, but we do want that consistent 90 days. If there's anything other than that in their screens, we're gonna discourage from breastfeeding. All right. Until it's safe to do so, they sure. can pump. Um, we encourage pumping. Um, if they're close, if they've been in 30 days or so, or 60 days and they're close, we can encourage pumping. You can pump and throw that away. And then um, when you hit your 90 days, put your baby to breast. Gotcha. And that actually just asks my, uh, answers my next question because I was going to ask, you know, what factors should be considered when determining whether uh, a woman should, uh, uh, with substance use disorder, should breastfeed. So it sounds like, um, you know, either abstaining and pumping um, mm -hmm. and just, and are there any other things to be considered? You consider if the mom has support, if she um, has people at home um, to support her in her breastfeeding journey. Um, if she's going to have the time to be with the baby and really um, form that bond and things like that. If, if she's, if she is stable in a program around other mothers um, that she can work through things with, because uh, breastfeeding can be a big undertaking and it's nice to have that support. Absolutely. Um, so what support and resources are available for women with substance use disorder and, and who want to breastfeed? Um, well, when I worked at the WIC program, uh, we do have the lactation consultants who are the peer counselors, and I worked with a lot of moms there. Um, so you can contact your WIC program, and I'm not. I mean, and I know here in house, we have um, we have one lactation consultant, but we just the hospital just put 30 RNs through our breastfeeding specialist program, um, and there was a that was a huge undertaking and. Um, a lot of hours and there were whole um, segments on substance use disorder, MAT and breastfeeding. Um, so our staff have been encouraged and empowered because used to be everyone's scared. They're scared of saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. Um, so we've really upped our education game to our staff. Um, we have uh, Courtney Wellman, our nurse practitioner from the Moms program is available for consultation. A lot of times nurses will call her and say, um, I have a mom and she was positive for this or that. Um, and she's wanting to breastfeed, I don't know what to tell her. Um, and she's an invaluable resource um, and knows the literature and the latest studies um, and if it's safe or not for her to do so. Um, and then we have peer recovery coaches. We reach, they can reach out to Healthy Connections. We try to set them up with community resources so that they feel empowered and encouraged to continue to breastfeed. Great, um, so when when a woman is is has decisions whether she, when when she wants to, uh, what if she's unable to breastfeed? Um, how can she give her baby some benefits of breastfeeding? Um, things such as um, skin to skin contact, um, some other things that that she can do. You said it, skin to skin, all the time. Um, it's good for mom. It's good for baby. Um, just like we talked about before, that skin to tent, skin. It's um, temperature regulation for the baby. It's um, vital sign uh, thermoregulation, regulating the temperature for mom. It um, decreases her um, risk of postpartum depression, but also seeing that eye contact, forming that bonding. Um, that's more important than anything. Anything that we can offer, that bonding is more the most important. Awesome. Um, we talked a little bit about stigma earlier today, but you know, what steps can women with substance use disorder take to ensure that the health um, and safety of 
their baby when they choose to breastfeed? And that's a part one of my question. And then the second part is, um, you know, how, how can women um, address their concerns with judgment or stigma related to breastfeeding? Do you want to take a stab at that or you want me to go? <laughs> um, I know. I mean, I, I know I work with people. I have children in my class that um, have been substance use, have used disorder babies or their children now. Um, but I think for her, it was more, um, she got help. She got programs that were helping her. She had family that was around her. Um, and she ended up, she's got her children back now, but I think family's a good thing. I do too. Um, and here in-house, sorry, I'm going to brag on us again, but we've been working super hard. We had a stigma training a couple years ago and it was a big um, success and we're getting ready to put on another one. Um, and it's mandatory for everyone in the maternity center and Hoops Family Children's Hospital um, because um, it's important for them to know um, kind of get a taste of what our moms are dealing with, what they're going through, and just um, for us to feel like a safe space. And that's what I would encourage anybody to do. If you're here and you feel like you're um, being scrutinized or um, stigma is a factor, reach out to somebody. Um, again, the mom's program, you could reach out to somebody there. But I, also another thing, um, if you watch this before you come in, I want you to feel empowered that you're in, you're stable in a program, you're doing the work and you deserve to breastfeed your baby if that's what you desire. Exactly. And I do, I think that like what they do, the reaching out to the community is the most important thing because a lot of moms feel guilty um, and they feel like they're gonna be judged and I feel like they're afraid to reach out. Mm -hmm. And so definitely the, the advertising and the putting the information out there is one of the big things. I agree. I agree. Well, ladies, um, are there any other questions? I'm thinking of some myths uh, that we could possibly uh, talk about. If one of you want to talk about one of those. Um, um, some of the moms think that if they have hep C, that they cannot breastfeed. And that really is a myth. Um, it's really only contraindicated if you are HIV positive. But with hep C, as long as there are no open wounds, like, um, you know, the baby can get to the breast. There's no blood, no open wounds or anything. Moms are fully able to breastfeed. So uh, when you say open wounds, you like maybe crack nipples? Crack nipples, or, gotcha. anything, yes. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had one mom who had a wound over here, but it was just covered and she still had the baby to the breast because there was no contact with the baby there. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, ladies, thank you so much. We've talked about the benefits of breastfeeding. We've talked about some of the potential risks um, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, using CBD and uh, marijuana. Uh, we talked about uh, the medication and, and substances that can pass in breast milk and affect the baby. Um, you know, I think that we've, we've covered a lot of, of territory uh, and I think this is a great resource for our moms and uh, we will keep this segment open for a encore presentation for as we get more information and we do appreciate your time today. Is there anything else you would like to add before we close? <laughs> We just want um, everyone to feel like um, if they're struggling with breastfeeding, just reach out to somebody mm -hmm. for sure. There's support available. There's mm -hmm. community resources. And um, here in the hospital, there are people that want to help you be successful. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, stay tuned for our next segment of Minute for Moms. And thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>